Hawaiian eruptions, quiet, unassuming, gentle even. If you ever stand on the rim of a volcano in Hawaii, you might see something strange. Lava slowly creeps its way down the mountainside, like a river of molten rock, glowing orange and moving at a slow, deliberate pace. It doesn't explode, it doesn't roar, it just flows. That's a Hawaiian eruption. The lava is thin, runny like syrup, far less viscous than you'd expect. It doesn't trap gas inside, which means no violent pressure builds up. Instead, the lava just flows, slowly. No dramatic bursts, no ash clouds. It's calm, steady. Sure, there are moments when the lava may sputter, but it never gets out of control. Picture a giant kettle bubbling away. This kind of eruption doesn't produce massive explosions. It's the gentle kind. It's the volcano's way of breathing. Hawaiian eruptions create what are called shield volcanoes. They're wide, flat, and broad, like the shields of ancient warriors. These volcanoes form over thousands of years as the lava keeps flowing, layering, and building up. Over time, the land becomes smoother, less jagged. The eruption itself may last for years or even decades, like the steady rhythm of an orchestra playing a slow, calming melody. This kind of eruption is the least dangerous to humans. In fact, people sometimes walk on the cooled lava, but not too close to the active parts. It's the lava flows that can take a house, or a road, or anything in its path. But even then, it's slow, no sudden destruction. The drama comes from watching something ancient and powerful move at its own pace. Strombolian eruptions, gentle, rhythmic, as though the volcano is breathing, its pulse steady and unhurried. Imagine standing near the rim of Stromboli, a volcanic island off the coast of Italy. The air is warm, thick with the scent of earth, and the ground beneath your feet hums faintly. Every few minutes, the volcano exhales, a soft, quick puff of lava rising into the sky. It doesn't explode, it doesn't roar, it just sends a burst of fiery rock into the air, its glow briefly lighting up the night. Then, it's over. Like the volcano is taking another breath, this eruption doesn't demand attention. There's no massive column of ash stretching into the sky, no earth-shaking roar, just a pulse, a burst of lava slowly drifting downward as if it's deciding where to go next. Each tiny burst is the volcano's way of saying, I'm still here, I'm still moving. The lava that flows in Strombolian eruptions is thick yet fluid. It moves easily, like honey. It doesn't trap gas, so there's no overwhelming buildup of pressure. Instead, the gas escapes in small bursts, leaving behind glowing rocks that fall back to Earth. The eruption's beauty is in its simplicity. It's nature's heartbeat, slow, constant, almost meditative. The volcano builds upon itself, layer by layer. Over time, these small eruptions create a sharp, conical peak, tall but not menacing. The volcano grows quietly, steadily, its slopes adorned with jagged lava rocks, built up over centuries of gentle puffs, a rhythm of nature, persistent, unhurried. Now, imagine the rhythm shifting, the heartbeat quickens, a quiet hum turns into a sudden shout. A volcanian eruption is louder, sharper, unpredictable. The magma beneath the Earth's crust doesn't always flow easily. Sometimes it becomes thicker, more reluctant to move. It traps gas, gas that doesn't escape until the pressure becomes unbearable. The result? A sharp, violent blast. The volcano roars. The sky darkens as dense clouds of ash shoot upward, propelled by the force of trapped gas. It doesn't happen slowly. There's no gentleness here just sudden explosions, surprising in their violence. These eruptions feel urgent. You might feel the ground tremble beneath your feet, hear the deep rumble, and see the sky filled with rock and ash, rising high, far higher than you can see. The lava doesn't spread across the land. Instead, it's expelled violently, trapped in a thick cloud of debris and hot gases. The eruption feels almost alive, unpredictable, the mountain shakes, the air is heavy with ash, and the earth seems to tremble with power. You cannot predict when it will happen, only that it will. A sudden burst of lava and ash, the volcano's release, coming when you least expect it, like a scream that cuts through the silence. And then, there's Pelean eruptions. These are the moments when the volcano's restlessness becomes almost palpable, when all the earth seems to hold its breath before everything explodes. 
It's as though the entire mountain has built itself up, layer by layer, into something unstable. The magma is thick, viscous, and slow-moving. It collects in the summit, building a dome. But inside that dome, pressure is building. It's as though everything is waiting for a moment, a single instant when the volcano will finally release everything at once. When that moment comes, it doesn't whisper, it doesn't warn, it just happens. The lava dome collapses, and with it, everything changes. There's no slow-moving flow here. Instead, what follows is a furious surge of pyroclastic flows, fast-moving clouds of gas, ash, and rock. Moving faster than the eye can follow, they race down the mountainside, scorching everything in their path. They don't leave time to think, to react. They move like a flash of fire, unstoppable, blinding. The heat is intense. It can melt everything in its path, vaporizing wood, metal, even flesh. In an instant, the flow is so fast that it feels as though time itself has sped up. There's no warning. The eruption happens in an instant, and the land changes, forever. One moment, the landscape is calm. The next, it's filled with a deadly rush of fire. The eruption doesn't last long, but in its wake, it leaves nothing unchanged. Mount Pele, in 1902, is the perfect example. In mere minutes, the eruption claimed thousands of lives, its pyroclastic flows unstoppable, leaving nothing behind but ash and destruction. Plinian eruptions, they're the opposite of quiet, violent, explosive, and dramatic. Named after Pliny the Elder, who witnessed the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, a Plinian eruption is the kind of thing that makes headlines. This is big, loud, and destructive. The volcano forces everything up, sometimes for miles, until the eruption column towers above the landscape. The lava is less of a slow, steady flow and more of a violent outburst. Ash falls like heavy snow, but it's volcanic snow. The air is thick with the choking dust. Lava? Well, the gas that the magma carries bursts out in such force that the lava can't keep up with it. It's all about the blast. And when the eruption finally subsides, the effects linger. Not just the damage around the volcano, but even further afield. The ash thrown up into the atmosphere can mess with the weather. This isn't just a local disaster. It's a global disruption. Then, there's the phreatomagmatic eruption. This one's like a volcano playing with water. Imagine for a moment, magma, glowing red and furious, forces its way up from beneath the Earth's crust. It travels through the rock until, finally, it reaches the surface. But there's something unexpected waiting for it. A pocket of water, be it from an underground reservoir or the sea. The two elements meet, magma and water. And in that instant, everything changes. The heat of the magma causes the water to vaporize in the blink of an eye. Instantly, it turns into steam. But the steam doesn't just rise calmly. No, it erupts. This sudden transformation creates a burst of explosive force. It's like when you try to heat a pot of water too quickly and the lid rattles off. But here, there's no lid. The force isn't a small rattle. It's the volcano shaking the earth with the fury of its release. With water and magma meeting, the eruption becomes violent, far more sudden than any steady flow of lava or even a regular volcanic burst. As the steam expands, the eruption hurls massive plumes of steam, ash, and volcanic rock high into the sky. It's an instant violent release, a roar from the depths of the planet. And before you can even blink, the entire atmosphere feels as if it's been lit up, rock, steam, and gas rushing outward faster than the eye can follow. A perfect example of this eruption style is Krakatoa in 1883. The eruption is infamous not just because of the sheer violence, but because the force of it could be felt across the world. What makes a phreatomagmatic eruption particularly terrifying is how fast everything happens. Unlike other types of eruptions, which might take time to build and release, this one happens instantly. There's no gradual warning, no slow bubbling or puffing. When water and magma meet, the force explodes outward, often with devastating consequences. These eruptions are not only spectacular in their violent show of steam and ash, they are also dangerous. The shockwaves, the tsunamis, and the flying debris mean that the eruption is not just an awe-inspiring sight, it's also a deadly force. The ocean's surface might be turned into a seething mass of chaos. 
Coastal communities that are miles away from the volcano can find themselves facing the wrath of the sea as the very water they rely on becomes the harbinger of destruction. When this type of eruption happens, it's not the volcano just breathing out, it's the whole planet getting a wake-up call. Let's move on to the Fisher eruption. Now, this one's a little different. Instead of a big, singular bang, it's like a slow crack opening up in the Earth's skin. The volcano doesn't just erupt from a single point. No, the fissure opens along a long crack in the ground. Magma pushes through this crack, flowing out in a wide, steady stream. It's like the Earth is cracking open, not in an explosion, but in a slow, powerful release. What's interesting about fissure eruptions is that they're not over in a moment. They last. They can stretch on for months, sometimes even years. The magma flows out, covering the land, reshaping it bit by bit. Hawaii's Kilauea is known for this. When a fissure eruption happens, lava doesn't just burst up. Instead, it pours out, like a river of molten rock slowly making its way down the volcano's slopes. It might not explode violently, but it's a force to reckon with. It covers everything in its path. It's not as explosive as a Plinian eruption, but don't be fooled. This kind of eruption is relentless. The lava builds up over time, turning the landscape into something entirely new. The eruption is patient, but it gets the job done. Now, we come to lava domes. These ones are a little subtler. The volcano doesn't explode. It doesn't pour lava down the side of the mountain like in a fissure eruption. Instead, the lava builds up, slow and steady, like a dome growing out of the earth itself. The lava is thick, more like sticky molasses than flowing syrup. It doesn't go far, it doesn't need to. Instead, it piles up right where it bursts out of the volcano. Slowly, layer by layer, the lava creates a steep dome. But don't mistake this for peace. The lava may be slow moving, but it can still be dangerous. Over time, the dome becomes unstable. As more lava piles on top, pressure builds. And when that pressure becomes too much, the dome can collapse in a surge of pyroclastic flow, hot gas, ash, and rocks racing down the slopes. Mount St. Helens is a great example of how a lava dome can shape itself after an initial eruption. The dome inside the crater grew slowly but steadily. It wasn't as catastrophic as other eruptions, but it still altered the landscape. It showed that even slow eruptions can have dangerous consequences. With lava domes, it's not the speed of the eruption that gets you. It's the quiet buildup. The volcano doesn't scream. It just grows. And when it finally bursts, you're caught off guard. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to give it a thumbs up.